Hi, I'm Paul Brody and this is my shop. This is, is part three of the Bosch electric mountain bike. So what's left basically is the seat stays and I need to align these uh, uh, dropouts. And so we want the center of the wheel to be in line with the head tube and the seat tube. So I'll put it up in the vise. So the spacing for the dropouts is 148 mil and because it's recessed three millimeters each side we want it to be 142 although we are going to put on seat stays and a bridge tube so it's going to it's going to pull in the dropouts a little bit so if it ends up being 145 146 that'll be fine so we're at 138 now so we need to pull it we'll check and see Good. Just touching, needs to go a little bit more. So give it a little bit of a push, a little bit of a pull. That moves pretty easy because now we're 152. Just touching, you can hear it. This one here came out a little bit more, so push it in just a, it's pretty flexible. It doesn't take a lot of force. So we're at 149. I'm gonna move this one out just a touch. Then they'll be equal. There we go. Okay, I like that. So the next step is to look at the drawing. We'll go over there now and we'll look at the bend we have to do on the seat stays. So here's the, here's the seat stay drawing. It's a top view. We got lots of clearance for the tire. We're gonna use, use some chrome molly. It's 58049. Gonna mark the bend right there. I have these two radiuses here. That's where the tube sits into. Those are 5 8 uh, I call them circles. It's not a radius, 5 16 radius. And this has a 5 8 well, it has a 5 8 groove and it's radius as well. So as the two bends, I'm not hitting a sharp edge on each side. And I don't know how far I can go without the tube kinking. So we'll find out. There you go. That's a, that's a nice smooth bend. Okay, so what's happened here, I don't know if you can see that, I've gone just a little bit too far. And that's not, not necessarily a bad thing, but I need to pull it back just a little bit. And then I, then I match the drawing. Just holding it in the soft joints here. And if I pull it, don't have to put much force on it. There we go. That wasn't a whole lot of force, but that looks good to me. So we just have to bend the second one to the same amount, and then we'll cut off the ends, cut this end too, and then we'll go to the mill and we'll do some mitering. Check here. Ooh. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm pressing down on the small end and we'll see how they match. You see this one's just a touch higher. We just have to pull this one back almost incremental, but let's do that. Okay, so those are looking good like that. And I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna mark on the axle line here. Right there, it's a little hard to see on the dark too. And then we're gonna go over to the bike and we're gonna look and see if this is in the right spot. So that's where the seat stays gonna go. And I marked it 
on the drawing so that this is half, so that that line is in the center of the dropout. And I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to mark the center line of the seat, seat tube a little bit better. So here's the seat tube, here's the seat stays, and we want to find out the angle of the 90, because that's the angle of the 90. It's not the angle here, that's not the angle of the miter. The angle of the miter is up here. So here's the zero, and there's 10, and there's 20. So, M20, that's what I do to mark it. So what I have here is a seat stay jig. So if I loosen this, I want you to watch what happens. See this piece slides? As I go forward, do you see how it comes in here? And then as I go back, do you see how the seat stays get wider? So I need to set, I need to set the width of the seat stays for the size of the seat tube. Hope that's making sense. This holds down the back of the seat stays. You can see where it's been tapped many times. And it just wedges everything in there. There you go, it fell through. It actually ate into the fixture just a little bit. Never used a, the size of hole saw for seat two before. There you go. That's a pretty nice fit. So what we want to do is we want to have this along the center line. So the two center lines of the top tube and the seat stays match up more, more or less. So every time I put this back on, if I mark this where I want it, I know where to go to. I know if I'm too high or too low. So I'm outlining in red felt pen as usual. So that's where I want the stay to be when I put it back up. It should be right there. Now we got to put on the fixture for the for the seat stays. So let's get that set up. It's easy to tell this is the seat stay fixture. It says it says so right there. So this is a system where you can change axles really fast. You see how there's a couple V blocks here, two V blocks, and then there's a center recess, and this part of the fixture this axle fits right in there so it can't go back and forth and it sits right on the v-blocks and if the v-blocks are clean everything's lined up and then this part of the fixture has to locate so I've got an insert that goes into the seat tube so what the seat stay jig does it holds the dropouts in line with the center of the seat tube. And this is a little bit of a friction fit. You see here how I, I press it down a little bit and it holds. So when I file a miter onto the ends of the seat stays down here and tack them on, this rear wheel is held right in line. And that's what we want. So I think I'm going to hack sort right like that. That's a good starting point and that's my center line. So when I hold it in the vise, pretty wavy center line, that goes up. So my center line is up. So what's happening here is that I need to file at an angle here because it's not perpendicular up here. It's angled in. So I'm going to make a mark 
on the inside of the stay on the very inside so that when I hold this in the vise I always know where the inside is that is the inside right there so I can make that mark longer take my fingers that's the very inside so I've got the line that's the line for the inside I don't want to hold this super tight because otherwise I can squash it a little bit I don't have any V blocks that are 5 8 of an inch so you see how it's, the file is angling up a little bit that's what I want Can you see how it fits? It fits pretty well, doesn't it? And that's just the first file. So what I have to do is I have to file that until this comes down to there and then I know I got it. It's almost like I want to change the mark because this fits so well now and having it come down a little bit more doesn't really make a better frame it's just a little bit different it's got a tiny rock to it call that good so that's our new line and then we have to transfer that line over to the other side when this when this side gets gets tick tacked on which is next we tack this side on and then we work on the other side I got the TIG torch I'm gonna hold the stay in place and then I'm gonna do a fusion tack that means no rod so I have to be very very careful I got my stronger glasses for TIG welding. That's always stressful. I can't breathe when I do that. So much concentration. So that's a little a fusion pass right there. I'll try a fusion pass here. I like to use a rod, but see how it springs out? So I only got two hands, one hand for the torch and one hand to hold, hold the stay. Okay, okay I'm going to take a rod and I'm just going to make it a little longer there because that's a very small tack. On this frame, our next stage is the right hand seat state, but I have to know how high it's going to be. So to make it a ballpark, I take some masking tape and I put it on, it's not hot, and I put it on there at a 90. I'm pretty good at eyeballing stuff like that. And I wrap it round like that. Actually, that was pretty good. I want to look at that. See, see how the two met there? If one was up and one was down, you know that that wouldn't be straight. But they both met fairly well. So what I do now is I take a felt pen and I put a line right under the masking tape. And then I take off the masking tape. So when this seat stay comes down that's when I start to check I think I cut this one a little shorter so I don't think I'll have quite as much filing to do so we'll, we'll start the filing process right now
Oh, I can see the line now. Oh. Oh, cool. That's good. You can you can do a double check. These should, both of them should line up with that very close. That's what happens when you're fussy. Days are on. I'll go find some tubing. I think I want 3 8 tubing to go in there. I got some tubing here. I got all sorts of metal. But I might have hidden it because it's a different kind of tubing. It's seamless. Ah, like that. I found it. I put it in a special place. I'm eyeballing how much space there is down here and I got about a finger space so if I do about a finger space here then that's going to look fine so there we go I'm going to put a bridge tube in there so there's the stay the bridge tube is going to go across like that so this is the angle 10 and 20 it's it's 27 degrees so that's the angle that I have to set the mill and it's a 5 8 tube I don't have a hole saw that small so I'm going to use a 5 8 end mill at 27 degrees we'll go set the mill up Now I'm going to use the vernier and I've got my mark so I know where I want the bridge to. So if I measure from inside to inside. That's right where we want to be. That's about a finger in between the knobby which is the same as down at this, this one. So that looks good. We'll take out the tire. We're gonna do some brazing now. We're gonna braze the bridge tube in. The seat stays to the to the seat tube. Let's go in there. We have to make it level. So I eyeball off the seat tube. I'm looking for a, a right angle. So I'm using my eyeball there. And if I hold it down like that, and I want flux all around here too. That's a nickel silver rod, 16th inch nickel silver. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna heat it up. And when you heat it up a little bit, then the flux dries and it acts like a very mild, mild glue. And then I tack under here. If I tack on the top, it's gonna lift up. Welding always pulls. Tack under here, flip the frame around nickel silver this side then flip it over do that side and then then we'll do this there we go so i do one more check now just to make sure it looks level that looks good trying to make it even i don't want to do any filing And we have come around. Okay, so next is the seat stays. So I'm going to start opposite the tack. What happens is if you start the braze right over the top of the tack, you heat up the tack and sometimes the tack pops. So that's not a good thing. On the seat tube, it's one point. I think it's 1.6 millimeters at the top. Very thick too, very, very robust. Got smoke coming out of the seat tube now. So 
Okay, we're done. Big face. This is Silver Solar Flux, and you shouldn't mix it up with a regular flux, which is a blue paste flux. So I don't like to mix up the brushes either, so SS Silver Solar, Silver Solar Flux. So you don't need a huge amount of flux, but it's got to go on. Then you put the braze on in. You do not want to get any flux down the threads because if you get flux down the threads, it's very hard to take off. When this flux dries, it dries really hard. So even with hot water, it doesn't want to come off so well. So I'm being very careful to go around the side, but not get any down inside. This is the fixture, because if you don't use something to hold the water bottle boss, level it can go at an angle this is made out of a coping saw i added some weights i added a piece down so this goes like so and so it's like a balance beam it always wants to go level and this also acts like a heat sink too so it's hard to overheat the braze on and I usually put some on each end and then I flow it round. So let's see what happens. There we go, it's already melted. There we go. Okay, that's one on. If you're not careful, you can silver solder the fixture to the braze on. That's been done. Used to happen in Frame Building 101 on a fairly regular basis. And that's it. I just sanded the top tube and this is where the brazons are going to go, like there and there, and also here and here. And that's what they look like. So on the bottom it fits the tube, and on the top, cable on either side, zap strap. Okay, so I don't have any holder now. So this is experimental. So I'll do a little preheat, maybe the flux will hold it. There we go, it held. Look how fast that goes on. That's it. It's quick. Almost like I know what I'm doing. Next on the list is the ream uh, seat tube. So we got a dropper post. It's a 31.6. This is what the reamer looks like. It's an adjustable reamer. As you move this down here, you loosen this, you tighten that, it gets larger. There we go. See that? It's starting to catch. So we want you have oil, it's not lubricating oil, it's cutting oil. I'm gonna put it on the, the flutes of the reamer, six, six flutes. And then we also wanna put oil inside. And basically the area that's getting reamed is here, but it's all the welding and the brazing makes things out of round, so. So that's not really taking off anything. That's just going in there, but I don't sense any, any, any lumps or bumps. So that's a good sign. This is a really thick seat tube, 1.6 millimeters wall thickness. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see here, it looks like it's cutting more at the end there. See, see how, how the chips are concentrated right there? I don't get many chips there. It's cutting more at the very end. I took a file, I wrapped a rag around it because I want to take out the chips. So the inside is fairly clean and this is the first test. Oh, look at that. That fits fine. It didn't really take out much metal at all. So that's really once you put a seat clamp around there. So I haven't reamed it too big because look, it's, it's got a little bit of friction and it stays where I put it. So we're good. So I think we've uh, reached the end of our segment here now. So I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed all three segments of the Bosch electric mountain bike. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Stay safe.